Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. You know him as the Nightcap Meister from the Land Geek Nightcap, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Good, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We, uh, we love it when he calls you Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. How are you, Tate? Doing really well. Really well. Nice. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm excellent. Thanks. Awesome. And of course, the Bearland Aaron. How are you, Bearland? Good, and you? Good, good. And of course, the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. And of course, last but not least, you know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net land at moto.com and most importantly if you're not automating your craigslist and your facebook postings posting domination.com forward slash the land geek here's your sherpa he's the brain he's the professor he runs flight school got todd how are you i'm good mark how are you good you ever get tired of that intro by the way uh no but i, I kid you not i mean every time you say it i'm waiting for um i'm waiting for like as you say the professor and all i think of is gilligan's island and marianne i'm waiting to be called marianne like <laughs> it's just a matter of time do you want me to drop the professor no no no. it's okay it's all right it's all is good. It good yeah okay it's good for his ego uh, l- listen that's why i show up to this cause because it feeds my ego right like i leave this call i leave this room and you know mark I you know like, that your, I your family, it. they're you're like, owning it. You're your, your owning family's it. like, who are you? Like, dad, you're nothing, man. Like, but here, I add value, so. Yeah, no, it's true. I was taking my son to school the other day, and he started mocking my YouTube channel. He's <laughs> like, dad, you only have 8,000 subscribers? That is so weak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ask him how many he had? Well, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Um, because... You know, I try not to be very, very, I try to be very sweet and kind. I really reserve all my sort of <laughs> teen angst to project onto Eric Peterson. And for 2019, I'm trying to be kinder and gentler. But that being said, um, we've got a great roundtable topic. It's going to be case study roundtable. We're going to talk about the last deal we did, how we bought it how we sold it and the numbers. And it's going to be sort of like, let's put you on the hot seat. So who should we start with? Why don't you start with the Bearland Aaron? Bearland Aaron, last deal. Uh, Last deal was for a 40 acre. And I bought it from, uh, I think just a a, a widower maybe, um, if I remember right. So, um, I bought it. I mean, are we doing numbers and everything or what are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Like what you, what you paid for it. Okay. Um, I think I how, paid, did, how did you buy it? Did you through a mailing? Did you go through a wholesale? Yeah. Deal? No, it was, it was from our, it was from, uh, the, you know, our mailing process. Okay. Um, and it was, you know, somebody contacted me back. Um, the nice thing about it was that, uh, the taxes, she'd been keeping the taxes up on it. So I don't know necessarily how she got on the list unless she was just late one, you know, on the last payment or something, but, um, the taxes were all paid up. It was a 40 acre I bought for like either 4,000 or 3,900. And, um, I had put it out there for about, I don't know, like 1600 bucks or something like that. And, um, it's kind of a slow county, you know, and I, so I did have it for a little bit and then I just decided I was tired of looking at it. So I put it on sale and, um, you know, I put a couple ads out there that it was reduced and within like a day, um, actually it was within a couple days. Um, it was on Christmas. No, when was it? Uh, it was like Christmas. Um, the guy put a deposit down on it. And he, you know, I called him after that. And then we'd had several conversations back and forth. Um, he likes to invest in land. Um, he just collects it because it's a great investment. 
and uh, we spent some time then he uh, looked at a whole lot of other properties that I had and uh, ended up settling on uh, one more for the moment um, and then so we processed that so we added that to the deal now there's a a bit of time that elapsed in between all this because we were going back and forth but then uh, you know so we um, ended up closing on that so between that 40 and another uh, five acre property um, I'm, there's a $295 dollar $297 a month payment for the next 60 months. So I'm pretty happy about it. Nice. Very nice deal. And how did you sell it? On what platform? Uh, the, it was a click through from Landmoto to my nice. website. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. Awesome. All right. Scott Bossman, the nightcap meister, your last deal what did you where how did you buy it what did you pay for it how did you sell it what were the numbers uh excuse me bought it through uh my mailing process so 1.25 acre parcel for fifteen hundred dollars uh no back taxes and it's in an area that i know somewhat well but i uh did a little did a little search on the neighbors and and saw that a neighbor owned three of the adjacent properties and uh, got lucky on Ben Verified. I got his email address and just dropped him an email and he wanted it. So we did a, we did a cash deal, uh, $4,500 cash uh, on my $1,500 purchase. So it was a, it was a pretty easy transaction. It was pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> don't, and I, I guess the, the lesson in that is don't, don't underestimate the neighbors. Uh, when you, when you get a lot, uh, look into those neighbors right away. And, and I've been using been verified to my benefit, uh, with that, with email addresses, phone numbers, you know, you might get six or seven phone numbers, but give them all a try and see if you can get a hold of the, the neighbor. So that was, uh, that, that was a sweet one. I love it. That's going to be a lot of make is mock. <laughs> For the nightcap. It is going to be a lot of make his mock. Yes, so that's it is. Good. That's good. <laughs> um, let's go to the technician, Eric Peterson. Last deal. Yeah, so this one, um, this was a bulk deal. Um, purchased back in, I think, early 2017. Um, I sold... I think six of the... Yeah, six of those properties uh, fairly soon after and sold the remaining four shortly after that. The remaining four, um, the buyer uh, defaulted later on and they came back to me and, um, and I should mention these, are, um, these properties are in my QRP. Um, so it was a bulk deal in my QRP, uh, four, six, $460 a piece for each property. And um, so I had these four, they were sitting around for a while. I didn't really put a lot of focus on them. I think all of uh, 2018, they just kind of sat around and did nothing. I paid taxes on them and um, they were just there. And uh, I put them out in a deal of the week. Um, I guess it was last week and uh, they sold right away. Um, I got hundred dollars down, $250 doc fee and um, $125 a month for 80 months. Uh, works out to about a 400 and some percent return. Um, not to mention the, um, the default that, that happened earlier. So, um, you know, it was a, they were kind of slow movers, um, but probably partially my fault for not putting a lot of focus on them. But nonetheless, um, put them out for the deal of the week and, and they went right away. I love it. I love it. And that kind of reminds me, if you want to learn how to craft a deal of the week email so you can sell property in hours or how to target the neighbors, there's a little thing called flight school. All you need to do is set up a time with the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zano. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training and learn all about 
the land investing goodness of fight school. Landgeek.com forward slash training. Um, we got to go to the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Oh, I bought uh, a bulk deal in this county. Um, it, half my deals are wholesale and half I buy through mailings, I'd say. Probably August of can't remember if it's 17 or 18. Um, and I had, this one had, it had a um, ATV path going through it. It wasn't a road. I talked to everyone at the county. It was not a formally filed road. It was just a uh, ATV path. And so people would shy away. But um, my poster, my Facebook poster, he and I have very different ways of running Facebook sales. And so I like to have conversational selling, run the whole sale through Facebook, whereas he wants to, someone says they're interested, he want, immediately wants their email and to get their email and move them over so then they'll end up on my buyer's list, right? Um, they all end up on the buyer's list, but anyway. I thought I'm not gonna micromanage him, I'll let him do it. And so last Friday, he said, okay, here it's, it's five o'clock, you're not done with your day, go call these people. And uh, they wanted to buy the property and so, Filled the paperwork out that night, and so I bought it for fifteen hundred, sold it for one hundred ninety nine down, ninety nine dollars for forty eight months. So I bought it for fifteen, I sold it for five. So yeah, good. Nice. Yeah, nice. I'll do this all day because all I really had to do was talk to him at the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a feeling like people who are listening to the podcast right now that are coming from other real estate niches. Like their heads are about to explode. Like, what do you mean you're buying property for fifteen hundred dollars or four hundred fifty dollars or sixteen hundred dollars? Um, yeah, those deals are out there all day long. Um, it's it's a pretty insane model. Um, but someone who's not insane is the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, walk us through your last deal. So uh, my deal. We bought this property in 2016, actually, from a direct mailer. We paid $950 from it. I don't know if it had taxes owed on it when we bought it, but uh, $950 was the price that we paid. We sold it a few times and had it come back to us. Um, and most recently, the sale that we just had actually was a uh, kind of an outlier. It's not typical that we sell land this way. We just had it up on the website and somebody found our website without having talked to anyone, bought it, made the down payment. And uh, I got an email saying, Hey, this property sold, sent the guy an email congratulating him, asking him for his, um, you know, his document information so we could prep his, uh, the promissory note, purchase sale agreement and land sale contract. He sent it over uh, and we got an email from him actually yesterday saying he wanted more. So it's kind of a weird situation. I mean, it's not often that we sell property off our website and, uh, it was good. We bought the property, like I said, right around nine fifty or a thousand bucks. We sold it for one fifty down one fifty a month for 48 months. So it's a, it's a great, great deal. Um, bread and butter kind of, kind of transaction. The best part was, you know, we've had our money out of it for about a year and a half now. So this is pure profit at this point. So 150 bucks a month. I'll do that. Like Mimi all day long, baby. Yeah. I mean that, that'll pay for, you know, probably a nice, you know, lunch. Diapers, diapers. It pays for, for diapers. diapers. Yeah, diapers. exactly. Exactly. Um, Got to go to uh, Scott Todd. Oh man. Last deal. Oh. All right. So my last deal uh, happened fairly quickly. We, um, what happened was we, we had a guy that I've been buying some bulk deals from and uh, over the last probably year and a half, I've bought, I don't know how many countless properties from this guy. And he had two that he was actually holding on to like two of his premium lots that he did not want to sell. I think he, he was, he's a former land investor himself. So he actually, um, I think had sold these or something and then they stopped paying. And so we, we basically became the owners of them because we bought them from him. Now, these are not my typical deal. These, these are in fact, uh, this is this one that I just bought in January gave me heartburn because it is a point 
six three acre property, 0. 0.63. And he wanted uh, $10,000 each. There was two of them side by side. He wanted $10,000 a piece. And I was like, I don't know, man. That's way outside of my comfort zone. Like typically I'm selling land for like $7,000. I'm buying for like uh, 1600 So to pay $10,000 for one property, I thought it was nutty. And uh, my team basically said, look, we will sell these things. We will sell them for $25,000. And I'm like, I sure hope you're right, man. Like, okay, let's do it. So I listened to the team. We bought the properties in Jan mid-January. Well, um, what happened was, so we bought two of them, $20,000, but we, this one that we sold was, was one of them that we paid $10,000 for, has $9 of delinquent taxes. So I paid $10,009 all in on the investment. We sold this property yesterday, and uh, this property sold for... $33,800. So they out delivered themselves. Okay. Um, they got $2,500 down plus a $249 doc fee, uh, leaving a, ba a balance of $31,000 over the next 84 months. And it works out to uh, $373 a month, which I think is a car payment or, you know, maybe half a car payment. If you want to drive an expensive car, I don't know. It's, depends on your car payment. Uh, it's, it's a nice little deal. Our annual yield is uh, 58% on that money. So every year for the next uh, 84 months, I'm earning 58% on my money. And I think what's re even cooler about this is that this is somebody that found the land on Landmoto. So we found it on Landmoto. They contacted us on January 30th, uh, which was last Wednesday and they bought yesterday. So it's not instant, okay? It's shorter than my average two-week uh, cycle in order to, uh, from turning a lead into a sale, it's less than that. But five days, uh, not bad. And um, I'll take that deal. I'll do it again. Yeah, you know what I love about that, uh, you know, case or um, that, that uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I just, I'm having a senior moment. Like the, the case study, case, the deal? The case study, study, case yeah. study. So is that you're really highlighting the fact that larger deals, it's just relative, right? They can be done and people will have no problem putting, you know, buying properties at higher prices and they all sell. So don't be afraid of those larger deals either. And um, I think it's, probably a good idea to have variety in there as far as price points. What do you, what do you guys think? Well, I, I would say Mark, like this is an area, like I will tell you like this is an area that I've worked in for a while. It, it does give me like um, it does give me some, you know, heartburn if you will to think about how much money's going. Last week we talked about the deal that was purchased wholesale. That one also gave me a little bit of heartburn, uh, but they're working well. And I think that really what it comes down to sometimes is, is one you stretching your comfort zone a little bit right you know like if if you're more comfortable with smaller numbers well then you know you can hang out in the smaller numbers kind of like what we talked about if you like bigger numbers i mean i do think that there's a point in which you start to lose the efficiency of the market because you if you think you're going to go buy a million dollar property for you know 30 30 cents on the dollar you're not going to so it becomes kind of a a, a discount a discounted rate. But I think that really what it amounts to is you're really limited based on how you see numbers. So don't, don't be limited. Don't limit yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I got to give a shout out to, uh, Eric Peterson. Let's talk about limiting beliefs. Um, he, you know, he, he recommended a while ago, this book by David Goggins, uh, can't hurt me. And I, I just started it and man, um, I have lost all complaining privileges. Like this guy has been through some stuff and, uh, it's just, it's just, I mean, it just highlights like it's getting out of your comfort zone and what you can accomplish and, you know, the mental game. It's, it's really been a, a great listen so far. So again, I hate to give Eric Peterson a compliment, but <laughs> it's just, you know, 
have to. It's okay. We can delete this part. No, we'll, we'll edit this out for sure. <laughs> yeah. But at least you know, Eric. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, um, I, hopefully everyone's getting a lot of value out of the uh, round table and the case studies and able to learn something to apply in their business. And if you are getting value, it really helps us. The biggest favor you can do is to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course. And now our favorite segment of the Roundtable podcast is when we get to put a member on the spot and ask them for their tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book. If Zeno was on the call, even a quote, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. This week, again, she's being very generous. Mimi Schmidt, what's your tip of the week? Okay, so I'm trying to inject urgency into my deal of the week, and I thought I would research some different um, timers. And I started out, I had no idea how to do it. So I started out about three weeks ago. The first one I tried is called Sendtrick, S-E-N-D-T-R-I-C.com. So I tried it a couple weeks ago, and then I looked at my own email that came in. And you know how in the preview box when you get an email and you have to download all the pictures? Well, the timer had done that. I was very, I was bummed. So threw that one out the window. And so... Then last week, I tried this one called uh, motionmailapp.com, and it worked much better. So I can customize four different ways what the timer looks like. I put the time in there, um, and then I save the timer. And it, it's, I mean, the, all the timers seem to be easy to use. They create this URL that you paste into the text of uh, MailChimp or MailerLite, whatever you use, right? So this one, the picture stayed up. When I got the email, I could see it ticking away on the timer. And I will tell you, I was so impressed. Um, you could customize the background color, the color. You know, I actually like a more simple one, but I was really impressed with all the options that I could get for free. And it worked the way I wanted. And my open rate on my mailing this last week was 33.5%, which is really big for me. Wow. So, yeah, the click-through rate was 15%. So I was really excited. I think that's part of my heading, my heading too. I really like the heading that I used. But um, so, you know, I definitely like this one a little better. It actually puts its logo in the, in the um, timer at the bottom of it, which I didn't particularly like. But everything else worked so well, that, and it was so easy to use that I liked it. So that's my tip, motionmailapp.com for timers in your deals of the week i love it i love it kate litchfield thoughts this is a home run i i like it because this is one of the biggest um you know at, at boot camp we often talk about creating urgency and having that call to action and this looks like a solution to that for a lot of people using mailchimp i mean aweber has something like this integrated into it and some of the other ones might as well but this is pretty slick it probably works on most platforms so bravo wow eric peterson yeah i like it um you know on my landing pages um just like a lot of us i'll use a, a countdown timer just like this so why not incorporate it right into the email as well yeah, absolutely. I, I would say that this is really an important element in your marketing. And that if you're not using it, you're, you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Um, Scott Todd, I'll give you the last word. I, I like it. I'm going to start using it. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Wow. I got the sweats. I'm going to take my sweats. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like Mimi has, be, has morphed into the new Scott Todd. Because I remember like Scott would come out with like these tips of the week. And like every week he's like, you're just on fire. You're on fire. Like this is like, it was like great tip after great tip. And um, Scott, I think he passed on the baton. I'm trying. Now you set the bar yeah. way high. I'll see All right. That, the tip I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm glad Mimi's doing it. Like one less thing for me to do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like the pressure's off. Because- are there others that you guys have that you use that you like to? 
Oh, it's this one. This one that you just mentioned. That's what I use all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Thank you. You confirmed. You confirmed everything I knew. <laughs> I like it, yeah. Mimi, a lot. Barely anything. Really yeah, I'm excited to use it. it. Yeah, it works. Works well with ConvertKit. Man, I, I got to reevaluate some of these tools I'm using. I'm using AW Pro Tools with AWeber, and they have like a mobile countdown timer. This thing, I mean, I even forget how much I'm paying for that. This might eat, eat well, I don't know. There's some I mean, This is stuff. free if it's branded, right, Mimi? Yeah, it's free. Yeah. Hey. And I didn't even, like on Centric, I had to set up another account, so I got to sign in with a user a name and password of this, I go right in and build the timer. I press, you know, save the name. I can create an account to save all of them if I want, but it's just easy. I can create the URL super quick. Hey, Mark, when, when you're evaluating your tools, you should really, really evaluate that computer that you're using and switch over to the <laughs> server. Just saying. I mean, I feel like... I knew it was coming. I feel Scott, like you've got Scott a lot of gotten... samples to send out. No, I don't actually. I because I use both of them. I have two, so you know I use both of them. They're they're like near and dear to my heart. I love these things, and uh, they've been they've been producing they've produ been producing joy solidly since um, November. So there's a timer on that thing until destruction. Right, exactly. Well, you give us a smoke and tell yourself on your you books, then. Exactly. Tell yourself what you want. <laughs> Right. Well, you enjoy the Surface on your Windows 98 platform that just, <laughs> you know, stacked upon stacked and layered and layered of, you know, basically obsolete software and, and complete bloat. But I will give it to you. The hardware does look very nice and you do get that little pretty pen and it's great. Listen, it's all about the experience. So I can tell you that the experience is great. And it's not about my experience. You know whose experience it's about, Mark? It's about our flight school students' experience. It brings them joy because it brings them such great tools and the ability to learn. No, I love it. Oh, I, you know, when I'm monitoring wow. the, the flight school classes, you know, every day I'm looking for the screenshot where the surface just stops and just says, you have a virus. <laughs> Yeah. But it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, no. It's great. It's great. Yeah. So just reevaluate that. Just be honest with yourselves. And it's okay. And put it put Mimi's tool in the place too. What do you mean? The the motion, the 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 motion tip she just gave us. Oh yeah. I, I thought that uh the motion mill app. Windows won't won't do anything that's not proprietary. No, that's Mac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 the walled guard. Good one. Good one. Well played. Well, well played. Well, I thought this was a great uh, roundtable discussion. Hopefully everyone, again, is getting value. I want to thank all the listeners. Again, if you want to learn more about Flight School and see in real time the power of Scott's new toy, the Microsoft Surface, you got to go and schedule a call again with uh, the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Are we ready? We are. One, two, three. Let, let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Boy, Scott, I, feel, I feel like I'm getting really salty about the surface. And I'm not sure if it's just jealousy or. Well, it's because, it's because you're hoping, like, you see what you don't want is like you're you're afraid of changing from the mac right like i was too because the mac is kind of a cool thing however you know you're hoping that it fails and it just doesn't keep failing so then you're like dang it but it's right look you know like this is cool i mean this is a really cool story to tell but i went to best buy um i don't know about a week ago right about a week ago and i walk in it was um uh, it was, it was, a, it was Sunday. So it's not yesterday or not two days ago, the week before that. And I went in there and, um, to, to exchange something or whatever. And there was a guy there and he was picking up his surface. So he was picking up the notebook surface or whatever. And, and you I guys just became asked him, like best friends. No, I just asked him, I said, Hey, listen, uh, have you, have you ever had a surface before? And he said, no. 
And I said, well, I bought one in November. And he looked at me with fear. And he's like, and? I'm like, I love it. I'm like, uh, I switched over from a Mac. He's like, that's exactly what I'm doing now. And so, you know, like I can tell you that there is an exodus taking place uh, where people are leaving, leaving the Apple and they're going to Mac. And I said to him, I said, why, why are you changing? And he said, because I'm tired of carrying a MacBook Pro and an iPad. I want to, I, I want to write on it. I want to use a stylus. I want to use it the way, the way I should. I'm tired of having to use multi, multiple devices. So there's a, there is, a, there is, this is a real thing right? Like, I don't know, Apple, if you're listening, call me, I can fix your problem very quickly for some stock. But like, I, well, it's gonna have to be like, at a lower price point, because I'm not going to get at the, the peak. But listen, call me, I can fix your problem. I know what to do. I, I got it. But they don't want to listen. Yeah, I mean, I, I really feel like I'm, I'm just parading my ignorance. And having like this fixed mindset. Because if it's better, it's better. And there was a time when Microsoft was dominating the PC industry. And, and there's like this slow, you know, exodus that, you know, and all of a sudden Apple started dominating. It really just started with just this, this better thing called it an iPod. And then from there having that better experience, um, you know, that, that wave came and then, we, you know, the iPhone and, and from the iPhone, you know, the MacBook and all those. So it just started like that and it, it could be changing. And, um, the Mac's yeah. always been a better experience. It just was kind of limited to the creative fields. Those were the only people that knew it at the time. But no, no, I, here's I, I, the yeah. thing. Apple will create a Mac surface. They will because not. Because then, no. then perfection will happen. Well, I know Steve Jobs didn't want to do it. So no, I don't, maybe they, Tim Cook will reevaluate. Look, I, 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 I didn't make the decision lightly. Like I, I researched it over and over, like for a very long time, right? Like, cause I'm like, man, why is this not, why can't I do this? What I want to do on the computer? Like I know what I want to do, but yet I'm having to juggle multiple devices. Even, even in teaching like flight school, for example, you know, like I would be like, okay, now I got to switch over to the iPad. Now I got to switch back to the computer. And it was a, it, it was not a smooth experience. So like I always knew what I wanted, but I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the Mac to do it. And then, like I researched article after article after article and literally the, the MacBook team, basically the, they, they said, you will not be, the Mac will not be touchscreen, like period in the story that, that is their adamant about it. Now maybe they will in the future, but the minute they do that, they cannibalize the iPad sales and you know, they're not going to do that at all. They're not going to touch the iPad sales. So until the marketplace starts speaking with their, their wallets and leaving, you know, that, that might get their attention, but Here's, here's the other cool thing I think about, um, about the kind of the Mac experience. And this is, or I'm sorry, the, the Surface experience. And this is why Eric is going to convert next. You watch. Is because, you know, Eric, I'm talking to Eric alone, by the way. The rest of you, I don't care. Whatever. You can listen to this. But this is for Eric. Eric, on this desktop one that I have, imagine as you're, you're working your graphic artic, artist mastery, the ability to take your, your hand, right? And like zoom in right where you want to, right on the screen and then keep doing whatever you do in Photoshop instead of being like, oh, I gotta move the mouse, I gotta do all this stuff. It's right there, just this is what I want. Boom, solve the problem, zoom back out and you're off to the races. Eric's converting next. Well, today's podcast has been sponsored by Scott Microsoft. Todd plugging Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> those people to see the bonus piece. Hold on, I got I got to go buy some stock in it. Hold on, man. But you know, I, I think there is actually like an applicable business lesson in this to stay flexible, to stay open minded. Yeah. You know, to not have this sort of well, I'm a Mac guy or I'm a PC person. Like, no, you want to use the best tools out there. And if Apple is not going to create the best tools anymore, then you know they're not. Like, then you. The market is never really wrong, essentially. I mean, but the isn't that also like, you know, like even if you have a superior product and even if you, like, I would tell you, like, I, be, I, I love my MacBook Pro. Like, I love that thing. Okay. Um, but to, to the point, if it's, not, if it's not solving the problem that I need or if it's not doing the right thing, as Mark just said, and we stick to it, 
well then, you know, ultimately you're, you're sacrificing the, the, the best in quality for you and your, for your business. But I think that Apple too should be listening to, to people. And I know that Apple has always been kind of hard headed when it comes to listening to the, to the intelligence of their customers. But that said, if, if, if people are saying, I need this for this, then ultimately they, they need to wake up, right? Because otherwise what will happen is they'll wake up after Microsoft has taken back the, the gains or Apple has lost the gains that they've made on, on Mac or the, the Microsoft uh, PC environment. Apple has come so far though with making, like you'll have Apple elementary schools, right? If you're an Apple certified elementary school, you've got all those products, right? Like my kids, all of Arlington County buys every middle school child a, an iPad, Apple iPad. Every high school student gets a MacBook Pro all four years. And those things, they lasted my son all four years. I was so impressed. So they're indoctrinating the young people into that Apple brand from, from kindergarten, right? So yeah, but, yeah, I mean, I mean to be fair, though, I mean, Arlington County, it's like saying, you know, they're indoctrinating Starbucks to uh to the brand. i mean you know let's pick one yeah. of the most affluent counties in the country like not every county is going yeah. in you know yes that is true but i just see that as microsoft i'm a microsoft fan i am i just see that as microsoft's big they haven't gotten into that market yet. all right well that's good to know um you know I'm, I'm sure there's some type of, you know, rich Arlington jokes out, you know, something out there, but I feel like I should leave that for Eric and not myself. <laughs> no. <laughs> Eric's like, I'm not touching it. No. All right. Well, um, thanks everybody. Uh, I feel like we should leave it on a more positive note than, you know, <laughs> talking about <laughs> the affluence of Arlington County. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with Nightcap this week, Scott? Or next uh, week? Nightcap, is good. Nightcap will be exciting this week. Uh, we're having uh, our very own Tate Litchfield oh. joining us. Ooh, nice. And uh, we're having a, you're having a guest as well, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep it a secret. Yeah, I'm going to keep it a secret, but we're going to have a, we're going to have a coaching guest on as well. Oh, all oh, right. Nice. I think I know who it is. I'm excited. You guys track your viewership? Oh, yes, we track the viewership. So I was just telling Tate last week that, uh, you know, two of our most famous episodes are, you know, when Scott Todd came on. Well, Scott's been on a couple times and, and Tate obviously came on last fall. Did a, did a great uh, uh, kind of a buying and selling uh, role play with us. And uh, on YouTube, uh, you know, Tate's, uh, he's at like 150 views behind Scott Todd's 160 views. So oh, I'm coming for him. I'm coming for him. <laughs> Scott's going to go get his views off a machine. Somewhere. I'm going to go watch it. Hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. I need the link so I can do an email blast. But... <laughs> Don't send him the link. Send him my link. Send him my link, actually. I, send him a special a Microsoft link. See that email link shortly, Tate. I'm, I'm going to put that link in the newsletter. Just yeah. you know, and just Which say that, mine, right? You're gonna put mine. Yeah, yeah. Which one? And just say this one is sponsored by any other company besides the Microsoft Surface. Pick it. <laughs> That's playing dirty, Mar. That's playing dirty. Like, <laughs> forget it. Do a site. Do a split test. Yeah, we can do no, a. Split. No, I don't want the results of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Scott and I we're on good terms. You know, maybe we need to do a joint nightcap, Scott. And then just blow the ratings out of the water. Oh, there yeah. you go. Ouch. We could. We could. Yeah. Team up. Team up, yeah. Then no one would ever. There's no stop. conquering and dividing. No conquering. No, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. We're the collective. This is the Team collective. Work. Teamwork team. makes a dream work, baby. There you team go. Teamwork makes a dream work. I think, I think we got an episode title. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. And uh, again, thank you listeners for, for uh, allowing us to, um, you know, essentially go a little long on the, the round table with our bonus content.
and uh, you know, shoot us an email if uh, if you like it, or let us know. You know, hey, um, you know, I love the Microsoft Surface, and no need to discuss it anymore. It's just a superior product. Anything you want, give us the feedback. Support at thelandgeek.com. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. <laughs>